sweep encompass our lives and involve society. We think about them all the time. From a romantic expression to a guilty indulgence, sweets is something that most of us love about life and we couldn't live without. Sweets also define holidays like Halloween, the trick or treating, Christmas, the Christmas stockings, and Valentine's Day as a gift. Sweets is what makes these holidays great because without them, they wouldn't be the same. So you say, what would Thanksgiving be without pumpkin pie and pecan pie? I mean, we love turkey, but we always hold room for a piece of pie. In everyday situations, it ranges from casual candy to luxurious chocolate. A delightful treat for the palate we can't get enough of, or at least some of us can't. Interestingly enough, those who don't like sweets might taste sweet stronger than those who do. These are known as super tasters. And the explanation for this is simple. Super tasters simply have more taste buds, resulting in more intense taste. Because they have more taste buds, it allows them to taste more. Better. The rest of us are tasters and non-tasters who still taste sweet in different intensities, but don't avoid it. These taste sensory types also influence romantic compatibility. Two people with the same taste type aren't compatible, but two people with different taste types adjust their tastes, depending on their partner, to meet in the middle and meet some kind of compromise. About 25% of Americans are non-tasters, 25% super tasters, and the rest are medium tasters. According to the Taste of Sweet, our complicated love affair with our favorite treats by Joanne Chen, more women than men are super tasters. More white men tend to be non-tasters than tasters. Asian and thin women of any race are apt to be super tasters. And alcohol drinkers are often non-tasters, as are those who take their coffee black. It all started many years ago with the discovery of sugar from the sugar cane. First, people would suck on the juice from the sugar cane, which is sweet. But later, they learned how to refine it into like a fine salt that we know and love today, which has become a staple and pretty much representative of the flavor sweet globally. It's through this discovery that the majority of our sweets, not the majority, all of our sweets, have come to become what we love and know so dearly. Of course, another factor is not only sugar, but also history itself. For historical events have caused recipes to be shaped the way that they have been. Also from a taste of sweet are examples of such times when history has influenced the course of sweets across different countries. For example, China didn't have many cows, and because of this lack of dairy, which would be used in, let's say, European pastries, led the Chinese to make lighter buns and cakes, which were, of course, steamed on the stove instead of cooking in an oven, because ovens were also rare, which gives us why is there sponge cakes. Also, the nomadic Turks in the 11th century didn't have ovens, which meant for them a steady diet of flat bread cooked on a griddle. And to add some variety to their food and thickness, they ingeniously came up with the idea of a layered pastry, which gives us baklava. Other sweets evolved, such as baklava and light as their sponge cake to form the splendid sweets and sugars and candies and cakes and other glorious things that we know and we love so much. And of course, we taste each of them differently, which of course forms a unique experience for all of us. So now go, so go and enjoy your sweets. And remember that you may not taste that sweet that has evolved over the last few centuries the same way that the person next to you eating the same sweet might.